have attitude? You haven't figured this out yet. Do we, I don't know. Should we have, should we have attitude? <laughs> we should have attitude. Okay, so okay, this is episode number this. three. Of Are I'm, we on? Are we recording? We're on. Exciting. Yes, it's okay. happening. Okay. So episode number three. Um, I've got Linda Murray in the car with us today. No relation. Everybody no thinks relation. We're, everybody thinks we're sisters and brothers. Exactly. See why. Yeah, me too. Um, and Linda, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this because um, this is number three and it's been a ton of fun to do these. Cool. So really, we're just trying to get some uh, some insights and some perspective from you. Um, you're by far one of the people I hold in high regard and esteem. Hold on to life. the steering wheel while hold, you say that, please. Hold on to the <laughs> it's okay. We're going forty. Crazy. Um, I, I thought it was really neat because like you've had a really interesting journey, um, f- especially from a world of business, marketing, entrepreneurship. Um, you know, just from my perspective, being from the product side, working with like agencies, yeah. then working at a marketing company, working with us, yeah. and then jumping off a cliff and starting your own business. I did. Um, so just, yeah, I want to listen more about your journey and get some ideas of like, you know, what you tell somebody else who's thinking about getting into business and, and leadership and that kind of stuff. So maybe we can just kind of start with, you know, that, that little bit of a journey, Cole's notes from going from the product side to the marketing company and then jumping off a cliff and starting your own business. Sure. One thing I never know is what tomorrow will bring has been pretty much my journey, right? So I think as much as we all think we have a path and it's clear, for me it's never been exactly what I thought it was going to be, which for me is exciting, right? So you're right. Go from, you know, started agency side, thought I was going to stay there for my entire life, had an opportunity product side and never looked back, right? Like it was just the greatest thing that ever happened to me from a career perspective, I thought at the time. And, uh, and then, you know, had the opportunity to, you know, be a client, um, and working with agencies and then got to go back to an agency and a great agency, um, and work with the gang at Intrigue Media. And for me, that was pretty phenomenal because I, you know, it was a great opportunity to sort of, uh, re-engage in, the whole online digital marketing, you know, sort of gamut, right? Google Docs. Google Docs, exactly, exactly. My, yeah, big nightmare there. Um, and you're right, then, then jumped off a cliff. And I think, um, you know, part of the reason why I did that was because of, you know, the culture that I was in at Intrigue was all about, you know, doing things swallowing a frog every day, right? Doing things that scare you. And buying a business scared me. But I did it. Yeah, you did. Right? And... Uh, so that was about a year ago. It was. Yep. Yeah, about a year ago when we signed the papers. It'd be a year May since we've owned it. And, um, you know, every day, I, you know, there is something that scares you when you own a business, right? Like, there's, there's challenges and opportunities and big decisions and small decisions to make and and you just push through it and hope you're doing the right thing. Okay, so a couple of questions come from that. Yeah. The first one is, is what what made you decide, and I always say this um, about entrepreneurship, it's like jumping off a cliff. Yeah. Because totally. you never know where you're going to land and I think that kind of even relates yeah. back to what you said before about we all think we have a path. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we end up getting somewhere we want to be but it's not necessarily where we thought we'd end up and it's not when we thought we'd get there and all those great things that kind of come with it yeah I think that's also really interesting too for some people that are out there a lot of people I talk to don't necessarily have a a plan Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're still trying to figure out where they fit Mm -hmm. but I think it's kind of they can put themselves at ease a little bit that you don't have to know exactly where you're going to go yeah Um, I'm a big believer in fact in the fact that you should just be open to opportunity and believe in yourself and In fact, I think um, most of my career has evolved because I've been open to those opportunities. Had I thought that I was always going to stay in a corporate sort of role with an amazing company, I would have never had the opportunities that I did working in my own community with Intrigue Media or starting my own business and running it because I would have already shut that down. And it is crazy. Okay, so tell us about your business. What is it? Uh, so my business, and again, I would have never even thought I would have been doing this 30 years ago, had you asked. Um, so we design and make baby bedding 
for um, and nursery decor for consumers across Canada and the U.S. What's and the name of your business? The name of my business is Sweet Kyla. So there's a plug. Yeah, if thank you. If you have babies, go check out Sweet <laughs> Kyla. Google them. They got great stuff. Yeah, so all Canadian made, um, which is really important from a baby's health perspective and wealth per- wellness perspective. And, um, you know, safety and security is a lot that we put into the construction and design of all of our um, uh, baby bedding. So that's important when you're thinking about uh, that precious little one that you're laying on a crib sheet as an example or a baby blanket. It's important to know where those textiles have come from and what sort of toxins and dyes are in those fabrics. So we're really excited about, you know, and I'm, I've become very passionate about um, you know, quality and design and textiles and, and, uh, yeah. So, okay. So why did you jump off the cliff? (laughs) Why not? Why not? (laughs) Um, honestly, I, uh, I think it was sort of, again, my belief in when opportunities present themselves and if they make sense that, It's if you have the ability to pursue it. For me, it was you know the right time in my life, and and I felt like I had the right kind of background that I could tackle this. It would be an interesting, fun challenge, and um, and it's been that. And I've got a great partner with me, uh, Pamela, who's got a background in fabrics and textiles and sustainability. So the two of us together, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Making a good team. Yeah. So one year later, yep. is it everything you thought it would be and more? It's everything I thought and more and harder and more challenging. And I've learned probably more in the last year than I've almost learned in my entire career. Wow. Yeah. 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 There's That's a nothing lot. like owning and running your own business and building it from the ground up. As much as we bought something that already existed. Um, we committed to each other and to ourselves that we were going to stay, um, true to the business for the first year because we wouldn't, we didn't want to come in and assume that we could do things better. Um, so one of the things we decided to do was, you know, stick to kind of the basics this year and really learn and assess the business before we went out any, on any sort of branches. And, uh, yeah, we've learned a lot. Yeah. So what's, what's a lesson that you've learned in the first year of, of running Sweet Kyla mm-hmm. that you would think kind of sticks out to you mm-hmm. that you might want to pass on to somebody else who's either thinking of starting their own business yep. or maybe they're already a year or two deep? Yeah. Yeah. So, ooh, so many lessons, right? One is uh, surround yourself. And I've always been a big believer of this. Surround yourself with talented people because you yourself can't do it. You know, I believe that a team, whether it's, you know, consultants, um, accountants, lawyers, you know, I, I view all those people as an extension of my team and they're part of the success. Um, you know, it's interesting. I was just talking to somebody the other day who saw Bill Clinton speak and his, yeah. for all his shortcomings, he's a great speaker yeah. and I would still argue he's a great leader. Yeah. Uh, he was saying that you can take a room of, you know, really intelligent people, take the smartest guy yeah. out of that, of that group or woman, put them on their own have them solve a problem and have the group solve the same problem and a hundred times out of a hundred the group's going to come up with a better answer. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, I, I think another big thing that we've learned and I think this is a tendency of owner slash operator is that uh, because you own it and you have this great idea and you can do it. You can affect change. You can be fast and nimble and but sometimes I can take you off your course in your path. So one of the practices we put in place, a bit of discipline now is if we have a great idea, we park it. We park it and come back to it in a couple of days to kind of reevaluate it to say, is it on strategy? Is strategy, yeah, you know, does it fit with our core, core values? And does it make sense for us to execute it right now? So a bit more discipline. Um, That's kind of surprising. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> you're kind of a go now. Go get it, get it done. I know, lady. I know. I remember the first time I went to a black tie bingo and I yeah. was, I was going up to tables to sell tickets and I was like, excuse me, uh, oh, don't mean to bother you. And you're like, ah, Rob, that is not how you yeah, do this. Let me show you how you sell some tickets. Who wants 10 tickets? Let's get it done. <laughs> yeah. And another thing that I've been doing since the first of the year, January, is because as you know this, when you own a business and you're, you're, you're working in the business, 
is I do one thing a day every day that moves the business forward in some way, shape, or form. So it can be as simple as reaching out to a stranger who I need to know in my network that's going to help me move the business forward. Or it can be as simple as sending an email or um, you know, reaching out to a mommy blogger or something. But I have to be very mindful about not just working the business because I want to move the business forward. Cool. Yeah, so it's one thing. One thing kind of on the business, not in it. Well, grow, exactly. Yeah. One thing that could potentially, so I call it throwing a dart every day. One dart. One dart. One dart. Well, I mean, that's a lot of darts. You add them up after a couple of exactly. years. Exactly. Right? Very and cool. Hopefully one of them will stick. Or I love that. Yeah. Throw a dart Simple. A day. It's easy. Throw I a dart a day. Throw a dart a day. That's it. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's anything we can get in the 10 minutes we were together. Yeah. I mean, one you never know where you're going to end up. Exactly. As much as you might have confidence in your path, be open to opportunity. You'll never Absolutely. know where it'll take you. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there was some other really good stuff in there, but I, I can tell you right now that the throw a dart a day is going to stick with me. Cool. So thank you for doing this. Yeah, my pleasure. And remember, check out Sweet Kyla. Sweetkyla.com, right? And Intrigue. Intrigue. Yeah. <laughs> sure, that's not I'll give you that's, the plug. I know. Plug. That's the, not why I'm doing it. That, thanks for the plug. Right? Um, yeah, so you'll see this up on, on YouTube. Love we'll share it. Share it up. Thanks for doing this, Linda. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. All right, see you guys. Bye.